Um, tonight's Tayshoff Award for Excellence in Broadcast Journalism was awarded to Wolf Blitzer, CNN's lead political anchor and anchor of the Situation Room. This award is given for career-long excellence, and I'm pleased to tell you that Wolf has asked us to apply his award money to continued education for journalists. So here's a... Here's a brief video, and then we'll meet Wolf. This is CNN. Wolf, as you know, he's kind of like Cher. People just call him Wolf. In airports, at sporting events, on the air and around town, he's on a first name basis with everyone because everyone loves Wolf. Now, even though we've only worked together for about a year now, I can tell you he's been one of the best parts about joining CNN. He's more than a colleague, he's a friend. Wolf's versatility on any story as well as his relentless reporting is second to none. There is no question this is a man who loves what he does and we love him for it. We have such great admiration for Wolf and we are thrilled to celebrate him with this honor tonight. Wolf, congratulations. There's probably nobody in the country who doesn't know who he is now. Would you welcome please Mr. Wolf Blitzer. Wolf Blitzer, CNN, the White House, Moscow, Seoul, Tokyo, Brussels, Doha, Qatar, Jerusalem. The United States has outlined virtually every strategic target in Iraq and occupied Kuwait. Elite Soviet scouts prepare for everything here. We're here in Oklahoma City. We're here at Camp Fallujah, just on the outskirts of the city of Fallujah. Parts of this look a lot worse than some of the war zones that I've covered. We were ordered to seek shelter. This is Late Edition, the last word in Sunday Talk. Do you still have doubts about Yasser Arafat's commitment to peace? It's a, a, it's a really Jewish state. It took me an hour to get you to say that. No. This source, which alleged this Iraq Al-Qaeda connection, was a fabricant. He was contained, as you repeatedly said throughout the 90s, after the first Gulf War, in a box, Saddam Hussein. If he were still there today, we'd have a terrible situation. But there today, is a instead, terrible situation. No, there is not. There is not. What happens in Bosnia when there are U.S. casualties? Well, we're not going to cut and run as long as there is a mission to perform. You said they're coming again. Yeah. What do you mean? Means there are people out there plotting and planning to kill Americans. Happening now. Happening now. Happening now. <laughs> I'm Wolf Blitzer, and you're in the Situation Room. Japan really capital in flames. Bin Laden is dead. And what's left of Al-Qaeda or their supporters seek revenge. We are vigilant and constantly monitoring. One miscalculation could cause a full-scale war. I think you are the only one who has the Situation Room, uh, uh, except President Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, you changed the world. Yeah, I know. This is Inside Politics Weekend with Wolf Blitzer. Part of the American dream. Was she lacking on that front? Yeah. Wolf, you, you keep on trying to, I'm try just to push trying to find on out what you mean. Allowing some of these illegal immigrants to stay is a magnet. There, there's no question. You want to be president of the United States? Uh, I want to be the best U.S. senator for the state of Illinois that I can be. You know there's people talking about that. Well, you know, that's silly talk. Talk to my wife. She'll tell me I need to learn just to put my socks in the hamper. And CNN can now project that Barack Obama 47 years old, will become the 44th president of the United States. Time now for the ridiculous, the behind the beard edition. Now over the years, we've learned that Wolf has many hidden talents. Rapping Missy Elliott lyrics, for instance. Keep your eyes on my ba bum ba bum bum You know, you can get into it, you know what I'm saying? You know, a lot of it. <laughs> Makes it seem in a whole new way, doesn't it? Right now, you're probably asking yourself a question once posed by a young balloon boy as he awaited his big interview on CNN. Wolf, Say hi me. to Wolf. His name's Wolf. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. Who the hell is Wolf? Listen, balloon boy, I'll tell you who the hell Wolf is. Wolf's a top-notch journalist, a treasured colleague, cool under pressure and up for anything. On a camel. Oh, my God. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Congratulations, Wolf. Hey, congratulations, Wolf. Mazel tov. Little known fact, Wolf, do you remember I was the very first person to run teleprompter for you? I'm glad you learned something. Congratulations. Wolf Blitzer is the platinum standard of journalism. Cloaked in a mentally gentle humanity we should imitate for the enrichment of us all. 
Wolf Blitzer. Wolf Blitzer. Wolf Blitzer. Wolf Blitzer. Wolf Blitzer. I'm Wolf Blitzer. This is Sienna. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was really nice, I must say. <clears throat> I'm not usually for loss of words, but I am a loss of words because this is a moving, moving experience for me, and I'm grateful to all of you for being here tonight, and I certainly want to thank the National Press Foundation for this honor. I'm thrilled to accept. Thank you very much. First of all, let me thank my wife, Lynn, who is here with us today. She's been my... Uh, She's been my guide, my critic, shall I call her my editor-in-chief all of these years, and I'm thrilled that she's here. I want to thank my boss, Jeff Zucker, who's here for those nice words for your leadership. Jeff, thanks so much uh, for all that you have done for all of us here at CNN. Uh, you've been a great, great leader and a great friend and, and an inspiration for all of us as well. I want to thank all my CNN colleagues and friends who are with me uh, this evening. Uh, they're sharing this night with me. Uh, their job is, uh, it's a really hard job, their job is to make me look good, and they do an excellent job at that. It truly does take a village to get me on the air, and I am grateful to every one of you who are here. I, I want to give all of you a big round of applause. I don't need uh, any reminding how fortunate I've been to uh, be working at CNN for these past 24 years. But that video reminded me of it, and uh, it, it brought back a lot of memories. As you probably know, and as you probably can tell every day when you see me on TV, I love what I do, I love my job. I get to travel, I get to see the world, I get to interview world leaders, I learn new things every single day, and you saw me even ride a camel, which was very cool. It doesn't get much better than that for a young guy uh, who uh, grew up in Buffalo, New York, and we've got that Buffalo connection. I know you went to Canisius College. Uh, I'm giving the commencement address at Canisius College this year uh, in Western New York, so I'm thrilled about that. By the way, that balloon boy who didn't know who I am, who the hell is Wolf, he said. Uh, I'm just thrilled that all of you know who I am, and I'm thrilled to accept the Saul Tayshoff Award for Excellence in Broadcast Journalism. Thank you so much. I want to thank the Tayshoff family for being here as well. At CNN uh, and in the Situation Room, we strive every single day for excellence on every story. We like to think we get it more often than we not, and I'm excited to be in the company of so many distinguished journalists and broadcasters who have received this award over these many years, including my former boss, Ted Turner, who literally changed the world by creating 24-7 cable news. Ted Turner, thank you very much and my good friend and, and colleague, Bernie Shaw, who's with us tonight, who uh, really helped me when I joined CNN on May 8, 1990. He inspired me, and he helped make me a better journalist. Saul Tayshoff and the Tayshoff family have been advocates for broadcast and print journalism and for press freedom for decades. And now, as much as ever, maybe more than ever, journalism really does matter, especially good, serious journalism. People thought Ted Turner was crazy when he created a 24-hour television news station. The news cycle now moves even more quickly. With the internet, with social media, the changes have been very, very dramatic. But we still have one of the most powerful platforms in the world to expose the truth, to promote freedom, to hold our leaders accountable, to give people their knowledge, the knowledge they need to improve their lives and their children's lives, and I see it unfold as we report uh, on CNN in the United States and around the world, and we're seen in more than 240 countries and territories. We saw it in Tiananmen Square, Bernie was there. We saw it in Tahrir Square in Cairo. I went there and I traveled there with the then Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton. And now, most recently, in recent days, we've seen it in Independence Square. There are too many places in the world where freedom is in short supply and freedom of the press is virtually non-existent. 
And I ex experienced that firsthand in 2010, December 2010, it was cold, it was wintry, when I spent six days in North Korea. We had officials from the regime with us all the time. We were restricted as to where we could go, what we could film, whom we could talk to. They want to showcase, obviously, the best. They want to keep us away from the worst. But it's, a, it's my job, and it's the job of all journalists, to push for more access, and we certainly tried to do that. Sometimes they even relented. In the end, uh, we may have become a little bit smarter as a result of our reporting in those uh, difficult times on, the, on that very, very tense uh, peninsula. It's my job to keep on asking the tough questions, whether I'm in Pyongyang or whether I'm in Washington. I want to thank all of you for honoring the work I've done, but there's a lot more work to do. There are big elections coming up, a presidential uh, race, the political battles at home, more conflicts, unfortunately, around the world. In keeping with the mission of the National Press Foundation, we're always going to try to do the best journalism, as always, as we, as we always try to do. You know, I want to leave you with this, because it, it came to my attention only in recent weeks. My uh, sister was visiting my mom in Florida, in Hollywood, Florida, and she found an old box that contained a lot of letters. And these were letters that I had written to my parents many years ago when I first became a young journalist. And they were written on what we used to call these aerograms. I was then a young reporter working for the Reuters news agency in Tel Aviv, Israel. Uh, and I had just started journalism fresh out of graduate school, and I really wasn't sure that this was something I was good at. I didn't know anything about it. I had never studied journalism. I had never interned in journalism. But I got a lucky break, and I got a job with this British wire service called the Reuters News Agency. And here I was in their Tel Aviv bureau trying to learn how to become a journalist. And fortunately, I had all these older British journalists who became my mentors, and they helped me and they taught me how to be a reporter, how to be a journalist. And, and I, was, I was going through these letters, and I want to leave you with a couple of sentences from a letter I wrote to my mom and dad early on. I had only been a journalist for a few months. And I, I wrote this. I said, Dear Mom, my parents were in Buffalo, New York. I said, Dear Mom, Dad, and Dolly. Now, who's Dolly? Dolly was our dog. So I, I would address Dolly as well. Uh, and I begin by telling him what's going on, the stories I'm covering. I've been sending him some clips of the articles I was writing. And then I say, uh, I, I say this, uh, if you have some advice to offer me, please read these stories. Let me know what you think. I'm still, uh, uh, and by the way, I write, I am still being told by strangers that they saw me on television at the Moshe Dayan press conference. And they remember the question that I asked. Well, the next day, the afternoon circulation newspaper, Yidiyat Ahrenot, wrote a long story about the question, noting that it was asked by a Reuters, co correspondent, a Reuters foreign correspondent, but they did not mention my name. So you can see I am improving little by little as a journalist. I honestly feel if I keep my eyes open and am willing to work hard, I have all the natural ability to become a good one. And now I have even learned how to type with all my fingers. <laughs> And I go quite fast, and I don't even have to look at the keyboard. And Dad, you would be so proud, because you always wanted me to learn how to type. You told me it was very important, and I have now learned how to type. Thank you so very, very much.